What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today I bring you another Destiny 2 video and today I bring you a complete guide on the new Izanami Forge, how to complete it, the best strat and also the locations of the drones to get the third mystery box key as well as the new exotic bow dropping from these forges. But before we go any further guys, if you do enjoy the video, I would like to show you support you can by hitting that like button. And if you are new around here and enjoy daily Destiny 2 videos, be sure to subscribe. Okay, so to actually unlock this forge, you have to do a filthy long quest line. I have covered that in a video suggesting tips on how to make it kind of shorter, but it still takes long anyway. That guy can be found linked within the video description if you still need to unlock this forge. Do check it out. Firstly, if you are in a fire team, it does obviously make things much easier, but if you are doing this solo, this guide will also help you out too. So firstly, loadouts. For me, the usual PvE loadout will do. Fully auto shotguns, a weapon for close range combat such as a hand cannon or an auto rifle and a decent heavy weapon. Heavy can be the thunder load, the sleep out or even something for clearing out ads quickly like a rocket launcher with cluster bombs on it. Subclasses are go with something decent in clearing ads, that is for sure. Important tip, rally a flag before entering to get full ammo. So firstly the layout of this forge is way different to previous two, with a main centre platform and two lower platforms. It's miles apart from what we are used to. Now this is what you want to do to be successful. If you are in a team of either two or three, one person stays up top, i.e. the centre with the forge, while the other two teammates or teammates separate and go to the lower platforms. The lower platforms are a little hectic, but there is plenty of cover down there, so you shouldn't really be having much of a problem. Now with one person up top and the other two on the lower platforms, with you up top, you kill whatever you see. Enemies which drop components do spawn up top, but they do spawn more so on the lower platforms. But up top, there are many other ads which do need to be dealt with as it can get overwhelming as you will see in a second. The person or persons on a lower platforms just get to work, throwing those components towards the forge. Even if they miss the forge, that is where the guy at centre comes in to pick up those missed shots. You will see in this gameplay the amount of balls which can be done by doing this. The person up top can get overwhelmed with balls to dunk. This method seriously works that good and definitely if everyone splits up and everybody's on a different platform. The amount of enemies that spawn that do drop components is absolutely crazy, meaning the more you kill, the more time you get added on. Also don't forget there's a timer on the balls, which to be honest doesn't run down that slow, so you don't have to rush with them. If you are in a team and you are throwing balls up to the centre platform from a platform down below and it doesn't bank, just give the call out. Now if you are playing solo, I suggest you take the position at centre unless you see someone else doing it, then you go down to a lower platform. Hopefully they understand they have the bank balls being thrown up to the centre as it will make things much quicker. The problem with doing this solo is though, you will come across players who haven't got a clue and just follow suit, meaning they will follow you wherever you go. If that happens then well just go back to the centre and hopefully you can achieve something from the ads that do spawn up top. But yeah, here for the first round, you shouldn't really be having issues with ads. If you are using a decent primary, like a hand cannon or an auto rifle, these for me work best as these platforms, everything is at close range. The only annoyance I had were the snipers up slightly on those platforms. These are best off just trying to be avoided because they spawn constantly and wasting ammo here is absolutely pointless. Your shotgun should only really be used also to escape if you are getting overwhelmed or are confronted by a monitor. Remember the bigger guys drop two balls. But really you need to be saving some of that shotgun ammo for round two. But yeah round one shouldn't be that hard. Now round two is more or less the same thing, just adds a little tougher to kill. Here is where I would say use more of your shotgun just to kill enemies quicker. Also by this time you should have your super, use this to clear ads if you need to. If you are up top this might be necessary. But also try and take out the cyclopses as soon as they spawn in, they can be a nuisance. But all in all you shouldn't really be having much of an issue here unless you are obviously underpowered. I'd say 625 to 630s and this would be a walk in the park for years. Yes, you will die. I died, my teammates died. It's all a part of the job, but that's cool. Simply respawn and get back to work, people. Now, as you get towards the ending numbers of balls dunked in round two, I'd say around that 15 mark, check the person up top isn't struggling with ads and dunking balls. 
The random we had and was playing with was struggling as you will see by the amount of balls up top it was overwhelmed with and this can happen. I saw he was being overwhelmed, we had 15 balls dunked, we had hollows up top so I jumped up to help. The amount of balls up top you will see is absolutely ridiculous, easy enough to finish the round and this is what you have to watch out for. It's all good and dandy you supplying the balls but up centre can get a little hectic especially in round 2 so if you feel help might be needed go ahead and help. And by doing this guys, hopefully you get through this and get to that round 3 which is the boss. Now the boss, round 3 in my opinion is the easiest at the 3 we have had so far. It's basically a giant hydra with a shield in tow, which has these kind of drawings on its shield. These you shoot, twist in its shield so you can shoot him straight in his face. It does teleport all over the place though, but I'm sure you'll get aware of that. Now what I did here was, because I knew my teammate was going to lay down damage, I was guessing the random was going to do too, so I decided to try and clear ads as best I could, landing shots on the boss when possible, and this is what you want, as the ads can again overwhelm you and actually lead you to failing this, so someone needs to be on ad duty for sure, but in all honesty the Hydra is a piece of cake and like I said to you guys, if you were at a decent level, I really don't see you struggling at all once you get a strap down. So yeah, do what you gotta do, two people lay damage, one person clears ads. If things get a little hectic with ads and one person can't handle them, hopefully if you're playing solo your teammates realise this, or if you are in a team just give the call out, it's as simple as that. I mean two minutes is quite a decent length to kill this boss, I mean like I said it isn't the hardest at all. So good luck people in trying. Now let's see where these hidden drones are, as you know from day 1 with the Black Armour's release with the Volendor Forge and the Mystery Box Exotic Quest, keys are hidden in forges and unlocked via doing a certain thing. So far we've had to shoot two drones that spawn in as the first round ends and the second one starts. Well this forge is exactly the same, on screen now you can see where the two drones will spawn in. One on the right and one on the left platforms. If you were up top, you can easily take out these two in a jiffy. These you will have to shoot though as the second round starts, as I do believe they do despawn, so don't hang around too long. Once you have destroyed these two drones, get back to work. Now, even if you don't kill the boss, the crate still spawns in for you to open and get that third key, so good luck with that. Now before I leave you to watch the entire run, also guys, it seems as though the new bow, the exotic bow, is dropping from these forges, not the one you have the schematic for, the exotic bow, which you will see on screen now. I haven't had one drop myself, but I have seen numerous people state and showcase evidence that this new bow is dropping from these forges, not just the new one either, from the Volendor one too it's dropped. So whether it's bugged, glitched or whatever as it's supposed to be a quest weapon, I don't know. Just keep your eyes peeled people and let me know if you get it. But yes guys, I'm going to leave you to watch the entire run through of this new Nessus is an army black army forge. Oh and damn my push rifle was absolutely epic and you'll see that at the end too. But guys, on that note we have come to the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed it, leaving a like really does help me out. If you are new around here and enjoy daily Destiny 2 videos like guides, top 5s, gameplays, reviews, just about everything, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video upload, turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But again, thanks for stopping by and hopefully I will see you on that next. One. Guardian down.
Guardian down. Guardian down. Down. 